everyone here i am with another video this is going to be the start of a series of videos which are going to be something of a slight diversion to what i normally do um and it's basically because i've been reading a lot of stuff on things like uklocksports.co.uk and watching lots of youtube videos where people have said it really matters which way the orientation of a lock goes um for instance yeah some people will say this euro lock with the pins down here pushing up onto the key uh it matters greatly that you pick it in the orientation it was designed for, because if you pick it this way, it could be easier, unquote. Or, for instance, this American one, Medico, where the pins push down, again, the similar argument goes along the lines. So, you know, I've decided what I would do would see if I can do a scientific experiment to find out if the angle you put the lock at really does matter. Whether or not picking it inverted, um gives any sort of extra advantage to picking it in the way that it was designed to be installed in the door or does picking it say 90 degrees make it even harder because you've got extra friction pressing against it or does you know any angle really really matter so what i do is i decided to create something i revved up tinkercad uh got the 3d printer out and created this this is what i call my spherical cow Spherical cow, by the way, is a physics typeish joke talking about taking a really complicated real world example and boiling it down to simple terms. Normally it starts with, imagine a spherical cow of uniform density in a vacuum. In other words, here is something that people can relate to a cow uh, and then we put it into a location where we can bombard it and we will know that we will get the correct things because it's a sphere and we can get forces done, etc, etc. It's not a very good joke, but then again, it's physics. So anyway, so the idea is that this will then go in a vise, like so. And the lugs on the sides of this correspond with the cutouts on the vise, allowing me to put the lock into any angle I wish, so I can then pick it. And that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to start in the conventional way for this particular lock, as it was designed. I'm going to pick it. And then I'm going to move around, 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 and I'm going to time it. And I'm going to use one of these timing bars. These are one of the uh, speed stack bars, which you often see being used in locksport competitions. And that's kind of the way I'm going to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lock in the orientation it is now. Put in a tension turner. Like so. Then obviously activate the thing. Start with both hands on the lock, on the bar, go pick the lock, come back onto the bar and then record the time. Hopefully that will then give me a set of times that I can use and I can then compare. So this is what I'm going to be doing from the next video um, and then we'll see what happens. What I will also do for those people who are interested is I will post up the spherical lock design onto YouTube, sorry, onto YouTube, onto Thingverse, and, <clears throat> excuse me, people can, if they've got a 3D printer, download it and print it and try other things. This is the Mark I version. The Mark II version I'm working on at the moment, it's going to be a bit more complicated because I'm intending to use a ball race, allowing me to then sort of move the lock to any position I wish. Now, to say this slave lock, five pins, it's one of my comfort locks because I figured what I want is a lock I know how to pick, and isn't going to cause me too much trouble because I'm trying to reduce variables from this from this sort of experiment. So the idea is by using the same tensioner, the same pick and the lock I understand, I ought to be able to get consistent results for this. Anyway, I'm kind of excited to see what happens, whether or not it really does make a difference or not. But anyway, tune in next time to see what happens in part two. Take care. Bye bye.